Hey everyone, this is Jason and Jeremy, and we are the Balcony Bros, here with you on Analytical Wednesday. For this Analytical Wednesday, we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, we're not going to be talking about any one game, really, and instead we're tackling kind of a larger and more difficult uh, topic. Con definitely. It shouldn't be controversial, but it, it is. is. Well, anyway, we're doing uh, this Analytical Wednesday on um, feminism and gaming, or I guess it's more like... Um, Lack of. Yeah, um, unfortunately. So, to start off our little, our little rant that hopefully you'll stay with us for the whole thing is... And hopefully is more constructed than just a rant. Yeah. Um, we wanted to start off by talking about um, why stereotypes are used um, in media... Stereotypes, uh, or be it um, a book, be it a song, or a video game, stereotypes are used as a quick and easy shorthand, really. Um, when you're reading a book and they they use a stereotype, they don't. Uh, you don't how how you don't need to think too much about the characters. Exactly, you already know what to expect. Unfortunately, um, and because of this. I think that a lot of a lot of the uh, sexism in video games is due to um, laziness in the coders. Uh, like, for as an example of this, um, if you ever played Resident Evil Four, you spend you the big tough secret agent Leon spend most of the game um, protecting the president's daughter. Um, Ashley, and she's just the most defenseless thing in the world. She can't attack. She, you're just spending. She most just of the, screams when she is attacked. Yeah, she just screams and huddles, and she's like wearing a, a schoolgirl outfit. I mean, it's a good game, but it's a ridiculous stereotype, and just she's a ridiculously annoying character. Right. And that's just because the, the the coders didn't really want to write code for her defense or anything like that, because writing code for an NPC is hard to do it right. Um, escort missions are super hard to write for. Yeah. Um, but as, as kind of like a counterexample for that, a sign that um, if, the, if the coders do take time, uh, they can make a quality uh, a quality uh, heroine um, as an example of that, we have uh, Half-Life 2, especially focusing on Episode two, with, episode uh, 1. With Alex Vance. Yeah. Um, if you haven't played that game, uh, you spend the entire game as Gordon Freeman, a, well, still a male protagonist in a giant awesome suit. However, he is a silent male protagonist. True. And um, Alex does all the talking for both of you. But she's with you the entire game. And she's actually incredibly helpful for the entire game. Um, she doesn't run out in front of enemies and get killed or shot down and make you restart or anything like that. Um, actually, it, they went as far as to give you an achievement for going the entire game without, with only firing one bullet. And the only way that that was possible to do is because Alex is there getting her back the entire time. And her actual character model isn't sexualized at all. It's, you know... It's blue down to earth. Yeah, yeah, blue jeans and, like, a shirt with a jacket on. It's not, like, RPG women with, like, two pieces of metal covering their breasts and a thong. It, and that's it's, their, like, plus ten armor. Yeah, it's, like, a realistic portrayal of how a woman would dress if she was doing that. Yeah. So, I mean, to wrap up this particular point, I, I personally think of when I see sexism in games is it's an easy thing for the writers and the animators and the coders to do. Um, but that's not always... Um, if that was the only reason, that would be... It'd be really easy to take care of. It'd be really of. easy to solve that problem. But unfortunately, it's not. We also have a huge marketing problem. Um, so, uh, would you like to explain what the male gaze is to our viewers? Sure. Uh, the male gaze is um, the thing where I see it, <laughs> where um, a a piece of art or something can be viewed is viewed through the perspective of a male, 
Uh, it's a big film theory. A lot of movies are made through the male gaze. Transformers being a big one. Where, um... So well, the argument is every movie is filmed yeah. through... Yeah, no matter if you're a woman watching it, or if it was directed by a woman, it's always... Through the male gaze. Exactly. Because everything is being modeled to appeal to the male audience. Yeah. And this is uh, one of the big problems when it comes to um, video game marketing. Um, most, most designers or most game designers are are being told to market towards the like the preteen middle-aged male yeah. and and because of this we see um, all the kind of awful male fantasy things um, which is depressing <laughs> when oddly enough when we were, when we were doing research for this video um, we were trying to look up the uh, like uh, the percentage of female gamers. And it's kind of hard to find an exact percentile. Yeah, there was a lot of data. Yeah. Just everybody said something different, but... But the, the range we found is around 40 to 50 percent of gamers are female. It is about an even half split. Yeah, so if you have this, uh, if you have 40 percent or 40 to 50 percent of your market being female, why is everybody making things to appeal to, to appeal just yeah. to the male? I mean, and we do have the female-oriented game, and unfortunately, it's like, it's, like, it's like oh well, these guys have their Call of Duties and their their God of War. Let's give the women Cooking Mama and yeah. Barbie Horse Adventure. That'll that'll keep them appeased, which is a horribly disgusting viewpoint. But unfortunately, it's what we're at. Yeah. Um, so, as kind of an example of, of this, this unfortunate uh, occurrence in, in gaming, or gaming marketing, I want to talk about uh, the designers called Team Ninja. Woo. Now, um, <laughs> they're fun. They're not. Um, you might know Team Ninja from, they did the Ninja Gaiden 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 games. I've, I've obviously never played them because I don't know the name. But um, they're more they're more well known for their Dead or Alive series. And most importantly, the spinoff of the Dead or Alive series, Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. Yeah, um, which is basically just a I mean, to be honest, it is kind of like just soft. Corner. Yeah, it's it's a collection of all the female characters from Dead or Alive. They're at a beach sport resort, and they're all in bikinis. And it's pretty much Team Ninja flaunting their jiggle technology, which isn't even which realistic. They're very proud of too, because they yeah. they talk about how they go to extreme lengths to make their breast jiggling physic engines better and better. And Which, you think they would spend all that manpower on making an actual good game. Yeah. Because the, the beach volleyball series, um, it isn't just beach volleyball. There are many games. Uh, there's mud wrestling. There is, I think, water skiing. Uh, I played the first one <laughs> in my adolescent years because I was part of the 13-year-old guy market. And it worked on me, unfortunately. It's okay. We forgive you. I'm a big man for admitting it. You are. I'd be afraid you, to admit that if I was. I'm petrified. But um, fortunately for me, my parents bought all my video games. <laughs> I borrowed it from a friend of my parents, and my parents didn't know about it. Oh. So. Well, they do now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they've actually and they they make the 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 female uh form in these games just so ridiculous that it's almost it's not even. Well, it's, it's not it's, realistic, but yeah. it's not even like a portrayal of a female body anymore. It's kind of it, it's they make it's almost grotesque. Yeah, they're just like to the lengths they sex go to. dolls at this point. Exactly, and which is especially creepy when you read interviews with uh, the head designer at Team Ninja. I forget his name. Always wears sunglasses. Uh, he he refers to the the beach volleyball girls. Uh, people always ask him if they'll ever be nude in a game because that's the kind of things that pass for an interview in the video game industry. And he says, no, because I consider these girls my daughters. Which is disgusting 
to me that like I, I don't know. It's that's weird. That's disgusting to most people. Yeah. Also, interesting note, didn't he get in trouble for, like, sexual assault or something? He did. I remember reading about that. I think he left the company, and there were a lot of female employees were saying they had been, uh, like, come on to by him. Well, in any case, I mean, obviously, when uh, the portrayal of the female form in video games is uh, a pretty awful thing most of the times. And so much so that I kind of feel that we don't need to talk about it that much, yeah. because I'm sure y'all understand. What I do really want to talk about, though, is Team Ninja's other project, which was Metroid Other M. Uh. Now, if you're at all familiar with video games, um, you will realize, uh, well, you probably are familiar with Samus Aran of the Metroid series. Right. And she's always been kind of looked at as... Um, one of our few saving graces in female game design. In female game design, because she is the original strong female uh, protagonist and player character, and um, usually off on an alien world, fending for herself and doing remarkably well and having super like awesome power. Um, unfortunately. I have, I have no idea how Team Ninja got their hands on the property rights for it or why Nintendo thought that was a good idea, but... Um, These guys seem like straight shooters. Well, they, they probably had a deal with Gadian or something. like. Yeah. They would only let them do it if they could have a large property or something. I don't know. I don't... I'm not... This is just speculation. But, um... Uh, Metroid Other M is pretty much unanimously the worst thing to ever happen to Metroid. Um, it completely destroys Ke uh, Samus's entire persona of being such a strong female like, character. Most, like, especially an independent female exactly. character. Exactly. Um, first of all, a big, a big uh, part of the Metroid games is Samus being alone um, on a planet by herself also, exploration is a big deal, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, in other M, she's almost all in constant radio contact with uh, super or superiors and and military people. And uh, while that is more of just a, a problem with the gameplay, uh, it becomes a real thematic problem when you find out that Samus has this wonderful suit with all these upgrades in it. But in Other M, she doesn't use it until, or she doesn't use any of those upgrades until the like the general in charge tells her it's tells okay her to she, use them. she's allowed to use them, um, which is just ridiculous, especially when you're in a part where you have to run through a field of nuclear radiation, and you're not allowed to use your your radiation seal shielding suit properties because he has El Capitan yeah. is not allowed. Or Which, not only is that, like, sexist game design that you have to wait for, like, Big big Brother to tell you to do something, it's also just kind of bad game design in general. Like, yeah. Like, if she has the properties of the suit, she should be able to use them. Yeah. Also, another big problem with um, Other M is that it takes the... Uh, the, the trope of the main character being a mother figure to a unfortunately ridiculous end. Um, the, the mother character as a, as a main character trope is, is kind of a... Um, but it's, it's kind of used over the, uh, the damsel in distress trope. Mm -hmm. um, usually what it is is like, um, to take as an example, aliens... Uh, Ripley is like the protector of the small female child they have found and um, it's not always bad sometimes it does seem a little bit lazy but yeah. um, in other M it's just taken to kind of ridiculous extremes I mean just look at the name they didn't even hide it other M yeah mother it's just oh it's just sad yeah, <laughs> yeah. really it's they've lazy. taken what is like one of the um, what if video games one claim to what we're, we're we're making progress yeah. and just destroying it. Um, did you want to talk about the new Tomb Raider? Yeah. Um, 
I've, I've watched it be played a lot. I haven't actually sat down and played the game. But I remember following it when it was first announced because I love gritty reboots of things. Um, and so it was really cool to see, like, Laura Croft get this gritty reboot. She wasn't this balloon-chested, tomb-raiding, like, doll anymore. She was this realistic-looking woman who was, you know, raiding tombs. It, like, seemed yeah. fun. Um, and then, uh, some of the developers opened their mouths and kind of killed it. I remember kind of, like, turning my head to the side, wondering like, what they were talking about when at an E3 presentation, uh, he referred to it as, like, you have to keep her safe, like, uh, you are tasked with guiding Laura through this dangerous island, because, of course, she isn't capable of doing this on her own. She needs the statistically probably male, even though, according to our research, that isn't that's even... That's not true. That's not true. The intended market audience the male... The male gaze. Yeah, the male gaze. Like, it, she needs your strong male hands to guide her through this danger. And I was like, all right, well, you know, maybe he just misspoke. And then, uh, in a trailer, there is a scene shown where some men are, like, ad advancing on her sexually, and you're like, okay, well, you know, guys will do that, I guess? Well, <laughs> evil video games. Yeah. Whenever the main villains, character is yeah. a female. <laughs> villains will do that in this universe, I guess. And then things get physical, and she escapes. And it's like, oh, okay, that's empowering, I guess. Whatever. And then the guy um, refers to it as her almost being raped. The designer? The, the, yeah, the designer refers to it as uh, a moment of near rape, and then he refers to her as a cornered animal in that instance. Oh, cool. Oh, that's, that stopped quickly. Nice. Um, refers to her as being a cornered animal, and then he went on to say something along the lines of um, escaping a attempted rape is one of the most empowering things a woman can experience. Like, oh, that's all they have to do to be empowered? Why are they doing all these protests then? Why don't they just go escape a rape? Like, it's completely idiotic. And so I was like, I was really turned off by this game. And, um, but it still looked fun, and... <laughs> I mean, there's a reason I haven't played it, but I watched a guy, I watched a friend of mine play it, and it, it, it isn't as bad as the designer led me, led me to believe with the shit he was saying, but there were still some tropes that I was really weirded out by, like, I didn't get the exact plot, so a lot of this is speculation, so pardon me if I get anything wrong, but it seemed like, uh, Laura, it's a prequel, she's yeah. young, uh, Laura is on a sh in a shipwreck, and she lands on this island where crazy stuff is going on, and she needs to escape a life with her friends. Like, that's the basic gist of it. And through it all, there's this girl that is being kidnapped to be used as some sort of religious sacrifice by the people on the island. So even though you have this established female protagonist, she is still going through the damsel in distress trope. She's still trying to rescue the helpless woman, which is... Kind of a cop out, I would think. Yeah. Well, once again, it's like she's. I mean, the female friend, I guess, isn't a isn't a child, but it's still kind of like the mother yeah. trope. Well, the the kind of point we're getting with all these examples is that the marketing of games really needs to go through a change before we can see the content of the games really changing that much. Um, the the female gamers are out there. Apparently, half of us are. Yeah, are which there. is awesome. Yeah. Um, why is it that we are still looking through the male gaze so much? Um, which, you know, to be fair, it's a thing that films haven't even gotten away from. Yeah. Because um, they're still doing it. It's just. It, it's disappointing to see the pandering that goes on. Um. That kind of brings me to our, our last big point, which is the gaming community in general. Uh. Now, um, and I'm sure that it's, it's a big, it is kind of a big joke in 
in the community itself that um, everybody who plays online games is an idiot Immature. and is rude and is going to yell something derogatory or or sexually. Right. It's just. It's Unfortunately, a, it's an accepted it, yeah. thing. We make it's, jokes about it. Like but it's, it's a stereotype, but it well, but it's not one that people are like doing anything about. They're just like, oh yeah, you know, you go on Call of Duty, and some guy's gonna call you a faggot, and say, it's just what happens. It's you know, it's this is what happens. It's like, well, no, that shouldn't be okay. Yeah, and um, one of the big things is using. Uh, using the term uh, rape for, like, defeat. Like a positive, like, oh, like, like, I just raped you. Yeah, it's... I mean, come on, everyone. The, you have to have something in your vernacular that is better than that. But, I mean, once again, these are things that you probably realize, so right. we probably don't need to talk about them too much. Um, it's pretty... Uh, I hate the term boys club, but... But video gaming is a boys club, yeah. even though 50% of them, like we've said over and over again, are, are female. Um, the problem is that uh, the female gamers are always, ref like, the, the girl gamer. That's, that's a thing. Like, that's yet another stereotype. Exactly. They're like, the quirky girl who's like, I play Call of Duty. And, and it's like, it's a thing where... You know, all these guys are like, man, I wish I could meet a girl that played video games. And then when they do, like, you're not a true gamer. Yeah, calling out people that don't play video games, first of all, that's really stupid. That's horrible. And um, then there's also the terrible, like, uh, the get back in the kitchen, make me a sandwich right. things. Which the is, misogynist yeah, jokes. Where most of the time people are using it like, in the like the hipster ir irony way, it's yeah. like I wouldn't really say this, so but they are. <laughs> yeah, like I, don't, uh, I hate those jokes. But um, <laughs> so much. But anyway, obviously our online community and basically just the gaming community in general needs to get over itself. <laughs> We're going about this this argument in a real <laughs> yeah with noble way. We we stand on a very particular side of this. <laughs> well. Um, but, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Um, we have two kind of very horrifying examples of the gamer community um, ostracizing females and um, we actually, just... We probably have more than two. Well, honestly. there are many more than two, but oh, yeah. these are two that we just really feel are quite important. And chances are, if you are into gaming, you've already heard of these or something about them or something similar to them, but we're going to have to bring them up anyway because I feel it's real important to get it out there. Um, do you want to take yours first? Yeah. Um, so, uh, there's back when the first Assassin's Creed coming out, was coming out, there was a, um, one of the lead developers' name was uh, Jade Raymond, and she was a female game designer, worked for Ubisoft, and she was kind of the, the face of the game. She did a lot of the interviews for it. She was like uh, Cliffy B for uh, Gears of War, or, you know, Hideo Kojima for Metal Gear Solid. She was the, the person to interview about the game. Well, um, some webcomic artist decided, hey, here's an attractive woman who is working on video games. She's in a place of power. Yeah, she's, she's in a place of power. I'm not, like, that's weird to me, I guess. Instead of, you know, instead of just accepting this, I'm going to draw a comic of her sucking three penises. And then I'm going to post it on we an internet just said forum. pornographic Well, deals, I think it's important to, like, say how disgusting this image was. Like, it was, it's vile, and he posted it on, I think it was something awful for yeah. us, and it blew up, Ubisoft issued a cease and desist, and when they did that, uh, he just kind of, like, they crossed his, of yeah, crossed his arms, like, they're telling me to, like, the guy who posted it was like, oh, they're giving me a cease and desist order on a comic someone else created that I posted on a forum, someone, someone that wasn't me created, like, I don't have any liability in this, and it, it's... 
another common thing that people do when they're like caught red-handed and being misogynist or sexist or what have you, they just pass off the blame to something else because they don't want to be found responsible for this. Mm -hmm. Which shows that like somewhere in their head they have to know it's not okay. I would hope. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. Um, my example was um, actually a very public one. It was actually used for advertisement. Perfect. For um, for the uh, uh, Street Fighter and um, Tekken. As uh, yeah. The Street Fighter and Tekken game. Um, when that was coming out. Uh, as advertisement, they live streamed uh, two teams that were are play one playing Street Fighter, one playing Tekken, and um, it was the uh, I think it's it was referred to as the cross assault or something like that, and um, uh, they they live streamed uh, their their training, and um, <laughs> so it's it's really bad. I'll. I'll I don't want to, but I'll probably put a link to that video to the video in the, in the under under side. it. But um, what happened was in Team Tekken there was a uh, a trainer um, named uh, Aris Baktanian. Ba Sounds like a villain already. Yeah. Um, well, uh, he had uh, he was like the trainer for Team Tekken or one of the trainers. And um, during during practice, uh, he started yelling out a very derogatory terms to um, uh, one of the players, Miranda Pack uh, Pacosti. Pacosti, yeah. That sounds right. Thank funny. you. Um, I'm terrible with the names. Um, and it gets he, he it is just it is uncomfortable how like vile he's being. Uh, he he. Uh, yells out or demands her to tell everybody her her uh, bra size. He continually refers to her thighs. At one point, he's like, uh, he refers to having sex with all the girls actually, yeah. but her in particular. Um, I think it, I you can't see it on the on the uh, the feed that they that they have because the camera's not in the right place. But I think at one point he goes up and smells her. Um, Tells her to take her shirt off at one point. Yeah. And, like, the whole time she is visibly, incredibly uncomfortable with this. She's doing that unfortunate thing you do when, when you're a very in an uncomfortable situation is where you, you laugh and you go, like, oh, stop it, you, or you're so weird. Because, I mean, this is something that is being used as an advertisement. And he's yeah. being this completely not okay thing. And she's like, this, like... It's very obvious how uncomfortable and not okay with it she is. In the end, she actually um, excuses herself from the entire competition just because the entire arrangement was was so awful. It amazes me that things like this happen. Yeah. Like he did. He he got uh, once the videos went viral. He got a a really good amount of backlash which I guess is the only positive outcome of this whole situation but um which he responded to in probably the worst way possible by saying there is no way to take the sexism out of fighting games it's just ingrained for the 20 years that we've had video games it just is part of it. And he said something about, like, if you take the sexism out of fighting games, then it's just StarCraft. Yeah, which is, which is like stupid. But like, oh, <laughs> we can't do this, or it becomes a better game. <laughs> well, we're not making judgments on that right. at the moment. But, um... It's... it's how did, how did it, this become socially acceptable? And the attitude of, this is a thing that's happening in society, we cannot change it, is like not only pretty unacceptable, but it's also really sad. Like, that this guy thinks, like, yeah, there's literally nothing that can be done about this sexism in fighting games. Yeah, and... Well, I had a point, but then I, I briefly, I obviously forgot it. I mean, it's not just these, like, 
Well, oh, no, I remember what it was like. This this kind of thing, the only reason why um, we're talking about this is because it was recorded and and became viral so, viral so quickly. Right. The really unfortunate thing is this happens all the time to any, like, to most female gamers. Like, I have, I have friends that are girls that play Call of Duty and Battle, I've name dropped Call of Duty so many times, I apologize. You know, Battlefield, online shooters, Left 4 Dead, and, like, I've played with her, and there is, there are more times that, or, I phrased that weirdly, I could not count on both hands the amount of times where people on our team have advanced at her, like, said, like, hey, we should have sex, like, just sexually, explicitly, like, come on to her. Like, it is dozens of times, and it it's just something that happens no matter what, and it's awful. Yeah, there is a, a lot of female gamers I've read um, don't admit their gender online because of the backlash right. from it. It's, um... Yeah, it's disappointing. Um, to get away from this topic just a little or to this particular point a little bit um, we want to talk about uh, some game hacks yeah on a kind of more lighthearted side of the conversation and which will become very depressing very soon but um, so there is there was uh, one or there's actually two instances of a father um, hacking a game to make the main character a female for mm. their daughters. Um, in one instance, it was uh, uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and he uh, just turned Link into a female character. Okay. And the other one was uh, the old Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong, where um, instead of uh, where it changed it so you play as Pauline and you rescue Mario. Um, there was immediate backlash to this. Like, the comment section on the news sites that reported this are just a battleground. They're, they're quite abysmal. Um, people getting very unjust at saying, like, you've ruined a classic game. Yeah. Uh, you've ruined an entire franchise. You're doing something illegal by hacking into a game and, and changing it. And like, one of the articles about the uh, Donkey Kong hack, it was like... It, the article was, Father Hacks Game to let daughter play as girl. And it was a video of game footage. And then the top comment on the article was like, doing this will just show little girls that crying and screaming about something will get them whatever they want. And there was no insinuation that this girl like pleaded or like whined about it. It was just... This dad wanted his girl to be able to, like... To play as a, to to play see as a girl. female heroine. Yeah, to see that there are strong females. Because, I mean, pretty much... I think everyone can admit there are not a ton of games or of main or mainstream games where the main character is a female. Unfortunately, yeah. Like, look, as an example, we had trouble finding a game to play for this, uh, for this video. The reason why we're playing is... Binding of Isaac is because um, well I did actually had a, had um, hydrophobia hydrophobia prophecy but it could, didn't record well so we couldn't use that but we couldn't find any other games that I had that were really female characters other than someone we wanted to talk about later right <laughs> and I think it's really interesting the backlash to these mods because like I was playing Civilization Five earlier because we're cool guys right. And I, I hopped onto the Steam Workshop, which is uh, a thing through Steam where people upload mods that they've made, and you can install them, it's really cool and convenient, blah, blah, blah. One of the cooler and, parts of Steam. Yeah, and I found this mod uh, where you could have different like kingdoms and civilizations, and one of them was to have Turians from Mass Effect, and your, your leader is Garrus. I was like... This is really awesome. I love the Mass Effect universe. And, like, it had high ratings. Everyone loved it. And there was not... No one was like, oh, you foo. So people were more okay with playing as fictional aliens that the developers didn't intend because a lot of the arguments about this Donkey Kong and Legend of Zelda thing were the developers never intended these heroes to be female and so you shouldn't be tampering with their vision. Mm -hmm. While these modders on Steam have tampered with with, <laughs> with with everything they have tampered with the the game 
to provide something that wasn't the vision. And everyone's okay with it because it's cool and awesome. And these people are more okay with playing as a fictional alien race than just playing as a woman, which is disgusting. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. All right. To be brutally honest, when I first heard the story... I was a little taken aback with Link getting replaced by a female Link in Wind Waker. Wind Waker is my favorite um, uh, Zelda. game of the, the uh, Legend of Zelda series. Um, I love it; it's a lot of fun. But um, and I must have I, I, like the first time I was kind of like, "No, Link! Link is a man and uh, kind of a feminine man, but he's a man." Um, and so but then I real I remembered um, reading something uh, that the game creator once said. Um, upon being questioned on why Link is a silent protagonist, uh, the designer of Legend of Zelda said that the reason why Link doesn't talk is that so people can relate to him better and feel like they are the ones playing through this story, not just Link, not just the character he right. came up with. So why can't? We play as a girl. Right. If if we're if the whole purpose is supposed to be we are the ones going on this adventure, what what does the what does the main character's gender really have to do with that? And I mean, another thing is these people were getting just so furious at this happening when it literally had zero like implications on their life. If they had never read the article, they would have never known. The little girl would have had her game and been really happy. The dad would have been, still been awesome. And this guy would have just lived his life yes. never knowing that this happened. Like, it literally has no effect on him. So why are they typing these several paragraph long just streams of hatred on these websites? And the only reason that we can really think of, of why they've done it is because it is such an ingrained part of the gaming culture. It, which is just disappointing. It, we, right. we, it's something that really does need to change. And one of the one of the best things about video games is it is one of the uh, the largest customer based um, media's. Uh, really, what people buy or what video games people buy really affects what gets made. Um, so we are in a really good position to change this kind of thing. And especially with the video game market being known to be so advanced and how quickly it moves. Like, yeah. it took film, you know, decades to get to the point where it was an established entertainment medium. Video games, it took like 30 years. Not even that, like 20. 20 like 20 years. Um, so we can do something about this. We really can change it. We just have to make it clear to, to game designers that we want something that is more just. I suppose is the best way to put it. Well, that's pretty much all of our points for this video. We've been running kind of long, but it's kind of a... It's a long subject. It's a long subject. Um, we just want to leave you with uh, two questions that we came up with while, uh, while doing research for this. The first one is, um, obviously we need more uh, female protagonists in gaming. But do we need more female villains in gaming? Um, do we need more, like, foot soldiers or grunts to be females? Or if, and if we do have a female villain, like, shouldn't it be something that isn't this evil enchantress or seductress? Yeah. It's, you know, a villain. Yeah. But, like... I guess the, 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 the heart of the question is, if we put more female soldiers in, then females will be getting shot in the face digitally. Um, so, should we make it equal? So, should we have just as many females getting shot as we do males in, in like a, a, a video game, a war game, a shooter? Um, I don't really think we should give our opinions too much on these yeah. questions, because they're more for the viewers to think about and maybe put into the comments. The second big question is, um, and this one might be a little bit more Divisive, controversial, yeah. but can sexuality of the female form in a video game be justified thematically? Um, as an example, I want to bring up uh, Me uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, 
um, four of the big uh, boss characters in Metal Gear Solid 4 are, it's a team called uh, Beauty and Beast, and what it is is four women who are encased in these um, life-sustaining body armor that just make them look like uh, monsters. I think there's like an eagle one, an oh, octopus, right. yeah. and well, anyway, and they're like these huge gun-toting badasses, basically. But when you're fighting them, after you defeat their first form, you have to defeat them again without their suits on. And in this form, they're wearing skin-tight jumpsuits, and they're honestly, I mean, they're very attractive yeah, looking. Yeah, hair, like long hair pulled back. Exactly. Um, the thing is, I think that, well, at least in this case, the sexuality is used to make you feel more awkward and feel more, um, what's the word? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable in the situation, because during this point of the game, you are starting to relive the horrors that were inflicted upon these women that turned them into the murdering machines they are now. Right. So, I mean, that's just one example, and I might be way off base. That might It might be inexcusable. Um, it surely is inexcusable when you find the Easter eggs that let you take pictures of them. And uh, Right. Yeah, but... Oh, God, Metal Gear. <laughs> but anyway, that's our... That's our video yeah, hope you for this Wednesday. Leave your answers to our two questions. Anything else you'd like to say in the comments below. If you thought we missed anything, anything real important, please bring it up. We uh, we tried. There, there's a really... Uh, that big car. Uh, we'll, we'll leave some, some more interesting videos about it. The uh, Feminine Frequency series, it's a big one that's being created right now. We have lots of links to, yeah. to send you all. And you can find all those down. <laughs> Zoom tight. Thank you. In the description. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. Um, please, please, please. If you if you only comment on one video we do make all year, one. make it this one because this is an important subject. Thank you all for watching. Uh, have a great week. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye. <laughs>